morning. Hello, Miner. Congrats on winning $25 a couple days ago. What was I doing? PP You know Pepe I When I thought of Who should be on that um, That uh, What is it that th Those community awards When they talked about like competitive player of the year I don't think you are the competitive player of the year But I think you deserve a nomination When you consider land results Into these things You've had a pretty good land season. Are you playing at Riptide too? Looking at uh, who else has already signed up for Riptide. If you are with Triggerfish, you might have a good shot to add to some hardware there. <clears throat> are you playing with Triggerfish? Okay, cool. Are <laughs> you... Are they staying at your uh did you get a room at the uh the venue kion kion i didn't meet you i've never met you in person um you were at the last riptide i was at home with the uh the child and the waifu both of whom will be coming to riptide with me You should be. I'm an awesome guy to meet IRL. Triggerfish one div three. That's a shame. They should have never been in div three to begin with. Would you believe I'm the only person on the seating council who put Triggerfish above div three? I put them in div one. Roundy scolded me, said they'll never. The Roundy, this is a direct quote quote from Roundy and Parias. Quote. Here, I'll get my... I want to make sure I get this word from word correct here. Uh, Camp Triggerfish Zone Supremacy will never win Div 3. They won't even make playoffs because they're trash, end quote. Their words, not mine. I believe, though. I was the only person who believed. 
They didn't believe in us. I swear. There is one, I won't say who, but there was one person on the seating council who literally said they did not believe in a single team. All 600 some odd teams that signed up, none of them they believe. They said nobody's going to win any division at all. There's not a single division that's going to have a winner. Grand finals is just going to be every team surrendering, giving up, because they know they have no shot. It's crazy. Believe it or not, Falco, we do take hygiene into consideration as to what div you can get. Sometimes it comes down to one team over another and we think, does that team use body wash, though? That might give them the edge. Is that why we're in div four? You never know. Am I going to talk about looty playoffs? I just spent an hour talking about looty playoffs. <clears throat> looty playoffs. <laughs> Playoffs? <laughs> you kidding me? Playoffs? So we win a game, another game. <laughs> we couldn't do diddly poo offensively. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Da -na -na. Da -na 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 -na. <coughs> Hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Whenever you're listening to this, whether it be live or VOD, Twitch or YouTube, or Spotify, while you are pinging the Looty Twitter account, Asking if they officially proved the seating council wrong. Malding over Splatfest results yet again like they mean anything. Walking in circles on your side while laying on the ground and thinking that cons is considered to be Olympic breakdancing. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this. Uh, unless I don't. The Olympics are over, which is a shame. I am a big fan of the Olympics during the social media age. You got the uh, the woman from Australia who I am convinced, like, just snuck their way into the Olympics. Got a zero in the breakdancing category. Uh, you got the, the one woman who's looking at the other two who got the, the, the medal and realizing, oh, I need to be chewing on my medal. Um, we talked about the, the Turkish dad with the shooting thing yesterday. You got people swimming in that poop river. Uh, we watched a little bit of the closing ceremonies. You got a guy laying on their back, like playing on the piano up on the ceiling. Crazy times. The Olympics, awesome time. Steph Curry is the greatest, greatest basketball shooter I think I will ever see in my life. I mean, those last four three-pointers – just submitted Steph Curry as one of the oh, are they a top 10 basketball player. Yes. Yes, they are now. You got to move somebody out. Larry Bird, you're gone. Make room for Steph Curry if that's the case, if that's what needs to be done. I've noticed over the course of the weekend that I got a lot of blue sky followers all of a sudden. Well, that's kind of weird. It is not lost on me why that has happened. And yes, I could do an hour long segment talking about the nonsense from the last weekend. However, 
that would require me giving attention to assholes. And I feel like I should be above giving attention to assholes. And I feel like you guys should also be above giving attention to assholes. So instead, we're going to be talking about tournaments, which is the whole reason, I guess, why we're here anyways. So if you're looking for me to talk about something else, it's not going to happen. News of tournaments that may be of interest to the casual listener of the podcast. 20XX qualifier number three is this upcoming Saturday. They're not taking the top three teams anymore. Instead, they are just taking the top one team. If you win the qualifier, you're in. If you don't win, you're going to be spending the next two months watching this tournament and being like, man, I wish they would talk about me for two months. Well, you're a loser. Nobody wants to talk about you. But if you do lose, you can still play Improving Grounds on Sunday. We switched the format. It's now Splat Zones only. We tried to cater this to what a monthly would look like if top players would want to play in it. And now we've, we've reached the final threshold. Splat Zones only. There's no reason you guys can escape playing in our tournament now. You got no more excuses. You don't have any money in the prize pool. Daycare is expensive, all right? Daycare is really expensive. <clears throat> worth it though it's nice low ink is the weekend after that so if you're looking for a low level tournament low ink might be the tournament of you i don't know if you heard about it yet she definitely signed up for low ink i'm gonna have a contest to where i'm going to decide what pickup team name is the best the best pickup team name to come out in this low ink i don't know what the prize is going to be but i'm going to be the judge for it and I will determine which one is the best. So sign up with a good pickup team name, and I'll pat you on the back. If your pickup team name sucks, I will roast you. I will absolutely roast you and make fun of you probably for the rest of your life. So make sure you do it right. Today, we are going to be recapping Little Squid League that took place on Saturday. It has been a long time since I talked about Little Squid League, but we get another opportunity to do so, so we're going to take it. But first... I had the distinct, well, actually, no, I guess I should acknowledge the highlighted message in chat. As a Wolves fan, I'm beyond upset we passed over Steph Curry in the NBA draft for some random name, Johnny Flynn. <laughs> Johnny Flynn out of Syracuse, I believe. Uh, I'm still crying to this day, LaMayo. Well, I mean, Steph Curry was really good out of Davidson, but that was Davidson. I remember, like, Steph Curry had two really good runs in the uh, NCAA championship um I don't I don't know if he ever got to a final four or not but he was always like dropping 40 bombs and that and I don't think anybody thought that would translate to the NBA and well it did <clears throat> I had the distinct honor and privilege of commentating the final block of 20xx qualifier number two alongside Shiny Hunter Zach, an absolute legend, one of the, if not the most legendary commentator we have in the competitive Splatoon scene. And I started off the stream by talking about counterpicks and realized that I'd had no idea what the counterpick rules were. That is because you can't do the traditional low ink counterpick. If you win a mode, you can't go back and play it. You can't do that if there's only three modes. That's right. I just now realized that Rainmaker was not in the map pool at all. In fact, the only uh, of the three modes they had, there was only a limited selection of maps for all three of the modes. Low um, Ink TV was the first one to do that, have like a limited map pool. They only did three for each mode, but they at least had four different modes you could pick from. Now Rainmaker is finally off the table. It's gone. It's gone. And I don't. You know, as, as, as somebody who doesn't play the game competitively anymore, I don't really care. But as a viewer, I don't really seem to mind it being gone either. There's been a lot of cries out for, well, they should be splat zones only, or we should start getting rid of tower control or rainmaker. And if you're going to get it rid of those two, might as well just get rid of clan blitz as well. But there's a lot of things as we've been hinting at IPL is going to be doing a league at some point in the spring of next year. We're all keeping our eyes on how this Dapple thing works out. 
But I'm starting to think that map pool they got of axing Rainmaker altogether might be the way to go. We'll see. But it was cool to see this set, uh, see these players play right in front of my stupid face. As the 20XX League is almost set now, Dat Kid Fan Club, BTDX, and Black Bull all joining the fray. Unexpected, to say the least, that those were the three teams making it in. At least for me, maybe, because yet again, I have made another prediction that did not come to pass. I mentioned three teams. I, as technically four, if you throw in Oro Jackson. But I was like, if Oro Jackson sh signs up, they'll make it. If not, who, who knows? Well, no, if they don't sign up, they can't play, obviously. So I had three teams who I th predicted were going to be the qualifiers. Duck Motif, Comp Diff, and Facade. Well, Facade didn't sign up. Duck Motif and Comp Diff played each other in losers' quarterfinals, so one had to knock out the other. And Duck Motif, the team I thought would be the lock, regardless of who signs up, to be one of the three teams to, to make it into the league. Instead, they're going to have to scramble through a final qualifier because... They had to go up against a, a team they weren't expecting to give them trouble. Or maybe they weren't expecting to give them trouble. Maybe they were. I don't know. But Duck Motif, with getting past Comp Diff, with no facade to deal with, with no Oro Jackson, they had to deal with one team they beat the week before. BTTX, unfortunately for Duck Motif, did sign up. And even though the Ducks beat them, they lost to them twice this weekend, even though they beat them the weekend before. Two losses in sets to BTDX, including a 3-0 sweep in loser semis that was a league qualifying match. That is twice that Duck Motif has been in loser semifinals going up against the team they had beat a week before. They beat Moonlight in Super Jump. Played them in 20XX Losers semifinals. Got swept by them. Same case, BTDX beat them the week before. Losers semifinals to get swept by them again. These opportunities for Duck Motif to punch tickets to the league keep getting denied by teams they've previously beaten. Now, about the Ducks. Before we get to the teams that qualify. <clears throat> I have, a, I, I, I have this thought going through my head because Red Shell didn't play for Duck Motif. And I wonder how much of a factor that changes things. When you think about Duck Motif, you always think, or I always think about Red Shell first. Not because Red Shell is the best player, but whenever you have a player that is off meta, that is unique, that seems to be the definition of what your team is. Oh, this team has a Tetra player. That means they are a Tetra player team well yeah but it's how everybody works around that tetra player that seems to make them work oh well this is a tent team because they have a tent player well yeah but it's how everything else works around that red shell being the unorthodox octobrush player probably the only octobrush player at the plus two level not being there makes duck the the duck motif team more human in a sense not that it makes them weaker but it makes them more similar to what everybody's seen it doesn't matter how good or bad a octobrush is if you haven't seen it a lot it's something a little bit different and it can give you some can well maybe not some confusion but it's not the same kind of thing you're used to fighting over and over again the duck motif team still really strong but I wonder what Red Shell's absence had an, uh, had an effect on how opponents kind of approached them. And again, I'm not saying Red Shell's the best. Kara is in plus one, and everybody else on Duck Motif is in plus two. If you care about the plus servers for, for what they actually are. But there was just kind of an observation that I just kind of noticed there as we were watching them play over the course of the weekend. Now, how about instead of not having a player play for you, bringing in a brand new player to your roster, or in this case, an old brand new player. BTDX brought in power to lift them not only into the league, but into second place overall in this qualifier tournament as a, uh, what, a, a sixth, a fifth seed, something like that. 
BTDX was not expected to qualify for this league. I the seeding wise, they weren't expected to. I mentioned them as one of the five teams that could, but I didn't predict they would actually do it. I didn't think they would get past Duck Motif. Well, they beat them twice, six ones in games. And the difference being, well, they brought in a pencil player, a rather good pencil player. But power of of all people, yeah, power is a world champion, technically, yes. And power has been one of the like recognizable top players for a long time. Power doesn't really play the video game anymore competitively that much. If you look at Power's Sindao Q profile, the last tournament that they played in was in January the 9th. A, uh, or, uh, yeah, back in January, where they finished ninth place in a uh, Sindao picnic tourney. That was seven months ago. <laughs> It was seven months ago. Power was at Low Tide City. Didn't play there. I know at Metro Inc. I don't know if they actually played at Metro Inc. or not, but they didn't make the podium if they did. Uh, and I'm not, I am not, before anybody clips this out of context, I am not saying that Power was washed. What I'm saying is the sense I was getting with my brief conversation I had with Power at Low Tide City is that playing the game competitively or at all didn't seem like that uh, interesting of a concept and maybe you know back in may it wasn't but when bet the team that power has been playing with in the past said hey we need plus one come on you can just dust off the old pencil all you got to do is paint the zone and throw some soda every now and then it'll be fine it worked out <laughs> it worked out really well and now well, I hope that wasn't just a one-off for Power because they just signed a two-month contract, essentially, to keep playing longer with the league. Hey, you uh, you messed around, and now you qualified for a league you got to play in for a couple of months. You cool with that? Uh, I hope so. And I genuinely do hope so because it was cool to see. It was nice to see some of the old heads come back and be like, hey, I still got this. I, I, can, I can come off the bench and... Start dominating a game if I feel like it. Can you dominate a game with a pencil? Probably yes, especially in splat zones. But they were able to get things done. Combined kind of perfectly with everybody else with BTDX. And they looked like a different team. They, I mean, they literally were a different team for 25% of it. But it resulted in uh, the momentum they were able to build up over the course of the tournament. They did really good. They got revenge on Black Bull. The team that sent them down, they were able to beat them as well in losers' finals. They'd already qualified for the tournament. They said, nah, we're not done. We're going to get revenge on the team that beat us and put us down here to begin with. Oh, boy. Black Bull. I owe this team an apology, believe it or not. Because Black Bull is loaded with players from Black Lotus, who I didn't even list as a team that was had a, of the five teams that had a shot of making it if they had signed up. Because Black Lotus, in general had a very underwhelming super jump tournament run. I don't think they won a single set in alpha bracket, although they did at least qualify for alpha bracket, which BTDX didn't even do. Man, it's such a crazy turn of events. These two teams are making it into the league. Well, Black Lotus, not officially. These are just players from Black Lotus. Mixed in with Brian the Drummer, another one of those old head players that still kind of lurks around every now and then. We're going to see more of that into the league as well. But I'm sorry players from black lotus i said you didn't have a shot of qualifying for the league if you signed up well you finished third place overall so what do i know that just leaves one more team that qualified the team that won the whole tournament excuse me the team that dominated the entire tournament only dropping two teams the entire time and by the way the two games that they dropped just so happens to be against other teams that qualified for the league as well so teams are going to be seeing a lot of over the course of the next two months dat kid fan club originally these players were in the category i was talking about before teams that or players i guess you should say a pickup project whatever you want to call this but players that could win any tournament they want to sign up for, which these players have done pretty traditionally as of late. Eh, we'll win this paddling pool or Triton Cup or Squid Junction or Proving Grounds or whatever. We'll just sign up and take it or finish podium or something like that. Cool. That's great. We give you a thumbs up for that. But this is a big boy tournament. Can you go up against the Kios of the world? 
Can you go up against the Metros? Can you dominate an Alliance Rogue pickup? Can you deal with teams like that? Well, they kind of answered the call. I don't think you can do any better than what Dat Kid Fan Club did other than have a perfect run. But they played the top five seeds in that tournament and damn near swept every single one of them. So if you're looking at like, okay, we looked at the teams who qualified already for the league. Guru Guru, Metro, Moonlight. Are these teams that are just going to be completely separate category from everybody else? I don't know. That kid fan club seems like they could hang with anybody, especially with how they played last last weekend. They play like that. Could they win the league? I don't know. It's going to be a long time. They got a long time to try to figure some stuff out. I will say, though, I, I, I cannot get behind the fact that that kid fan club is named after a team called, it has a player on their team named that kid. So in other words, that's like if I made a team and called it Pop Gun Fan Club. That's narcissistic, which I am, but I'm not at that level to where I'm going to name a whole team after me. So that kid fan club, we need a new name. You cannot have your player, you cannot be a part of your own fan club. That there, there has to be some sort of government rule against that. You can have a fan club, but you can't be the leader of it. I'm pretty sure that goes against like some sort of nonprofit code or something like that. Regardless, this is a great opportunity for these players of the Dat Kid Fan Club to present themselves to the world. Yes, these players do have our, uh, they're the people who have opinions on these players or maybe some select players. But this is an opportunity to get some positive momentum going behind these players because they're going to be under the microscope of the community for the next two months now that they qualified for the league. And this is a great chance for them to get some positive momentum going behind their back. And it can start with wins after wins after wins against some quality opponents, which if they play like they did last weekend, I don't see why they can't rack up a lot of wins in this league. One more qualifier to go. It's going to be a double limb. Only one team is going to make it out. Grand Finals is the only qualifier match. And if you're wondering if I'm going to predict what team is going to be the one that qualified like I did last weekend, uh, the answer is no. It can't be done. It's impossible. First off, registration is way too early. Last I checked, there was only like three teams signed up. Facade did sign back up yet again, but... They signed up at this point last week uh, also, and they didn't end up playing. So I don't know who's playing, and I don't want to make a prediction, but I will say this. If Oro Jackson even is a thing and they decide to show up and play, I think that would be my pick. Other than that, I, I still want to like think the Ducks can find a way to get it in, but they've played in two matches where they could have – qualify for the league already and they are 0 and 6 in those games so i don't know if push comes to shove if they can get the job done in the grand finals we shall see it's going to be a very stressful tournament not a fun one to play in but it's going to be a great one to watch and also before we move on i do want to give a quick hats off to the dapple production team alice pinky lit blue some great work that they're doing on behind the scenes here to get this one going. Now, there's a lot a lot of that work is needs to be done coming up in the future. But as things are going right now, this is shaping up to be an exciting league. An important one. Jackpot's gone. Starburst doesn't seem to be a thing. FT Win has done the fusion dance with Alliance Road to make Guru Guru this time around. There is an opportunity for us to figure out what the next generation of top level is going to look like. We already got some good candidates. We'll see what they do with it so far. One more spot up for grabs. I will say this. I want it to be the Ducks. I want to see the Ducks play in this league. I feel like they're going to be a fun team and they can be competitive with anybody. It's still going to be difficult for them to get the win this time around, though. Let's recap the week, though. There's a bunch of other tournaments that took place. (laughs) 
Welcome to, I guess I should just call this the Zenith Pickup Weekly Recap. Paddling pool number 279 was won by just put my files in the bag, just put my fries in the bag, bro. Second place went to a team that was a smile emote and also an up-down emoji. Third place went to uh, type she. I believe that's what my handwriting says. 31 teams played in this tournament, and again... The players who won that paddling pool tournament get used to me saying their names because I'm going to be talking about them in some coming tournaments down this list. SOS number 157 was won by Mathis. Bad Piggies took second place, and Shimmer rounds out your top three. 84 teams played in this Wednesday in a nightly tournament. 84. Is that the biggest weekly tournament ever? Like, a tournament that happens on a weekly basis. Has anyone had more than 84 teams? I think the answer is no. I, BCS never even came that close. There's no way. That had to have been the single biggest weekly tournament ever. And yet again, it crashed the Sendaku website. So there you go. Yes, Wednesday is a school night, by the way. I don't care if school hasn't started where you live. It started where I live, and work nights count as school nights. Technically, I did Google it, so I was right. It was a school night. Don't at me with that. Hammerhead was won by Nocturne. Maker, Mako Bracket was won by Jelly Squids. And Lantern Bracket was won by the Q-Force. Jelly Squids winning Minnow Cup the week before. Parlaying that into a Mako Bracket win. They're getting the win back under their sails. Love to see that. Triton Cup number 84 was won by the same exact team that won Paddling Pool number 279. Not New Gin finished in second place, and I can't even pronounce the Law, K Law KTM was the team that finished in third place. So, yeah, the players that played on Just Put the Bag in My Fries, bro, won two tournaments in three days, both of which were Dapple Production EU tournaments. 18 team only, Splat Zone only double elimination tournament, closing in on 100, about 16 tournaments away from Triton Cup number 100. Exciting times for them. From the ink up, number 59. That's right. I'm talking about from the ink up. I don't even have to be reminded about it this time. Was won by Pyramid Scheme. Actually, no. Pyramid Scheme finished in third place. I wrote this out of order. SGMA on Earth was the team that won it. And Jan was the team that finished in second place. Pyramid Scheme is in third place. 50 teams played in this bi-weekly tournament that I keep forgetting to mention, and I should mention more because if you got 50 teams playing it, that is amazing. How do they do verification for a tournament like that? Like, verifying for low ink is a very difficult process. It takes time. How can you do it on a bi-weekly basis? They're crazy over there from the ink up, but they're still going. Squid Junction number 74 <laughs> was won by U Leader. Which uh, second place went to Bad Piggies, who got their second bronze medal of the week. And Corrupt Over Light rounds out your top three. All right. The players for U Light are Zenith, Mikey, and Bab that won the three straight Dapple Production tournaments in four days. They swept every single ba uh, uh, Dapple Production tournament that week, other than the qualifier. But most of them already qualified for the tournament anyway so they couldn't play in the qualifier there should be some sort of special badge if you win three dapple tournaments in one week you should get some sort of like dapple sweep badge that seems like a quite the accomplishment that you could pull off there but we're not done because on sunday picnic number seven took place it was won by stanford which is a team that was made up of zenith atomic gray and yoshell which by the way those four are currently the number one team in the syndic season standing points Kyo, Zeris, Goss, and Biscuit finished in second place, and Moonlight rounded out your top three. So that was mostly Metro that won the Stacked Picnic Tournament. Zenith, in particular, won four tournaments in the span of five days. If we could somehow create some Thursday night tournament, which they might have won a Thursday night tournament. I don't pay attention to any of those. But at least four tournaments in five days, Zenith won in one week. The player's badge profile must look absolutely ridiculous. Oh. Recapping some of the looting matches. In Division 8, Last Squid Standing got a 5-4 win over Art Supplies. 
Also in Division 8, Hoot Hoot Recruits got a 5v win over Rainfall. Division 7, Malicious Melons got a 5-4 win over Hazard Level Minimum. In Division 10, Arrows of Gale got a 5-3 win over Totally Competitive Team. And you just saw on the Splatoon Tourney Champel, the Division 6 Championship. Uh, I completely forgot who we saw. Oh, I know. Also, Trick Fish on Supremacy 1 Division 3. And that was your weekly recap. Sponsored by every single 24 tournaments that are taking place this week. That's right. There are 24 tournaments that are playing this week. 24! Please, 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 listen to me. Stop making tournaments. L listen to me. Stop making tournaments. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Okay? Just 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 stop. I know some of you are thinking, oh well, we need a tournament on Tuesday night at four in the morning for division two through six. That's Rainmaker only. We really need that. We don't. I promise you we don't. We don't need another Saturday one o'clock tournament. We don't need another Wednesday night tournament. We don't need any more tournaments. We don't. Stop doing it. Stop it. Go go make like a, a, a do find some other hobby. D please. Please I'm begging you. You are not helping the scene by making another tournament. You think you are, but you are not. You absolutely are not. So please stop it. I will make you the sponsor, however, today's segment of the weekly recap. <laughs> Best viewers on No way. I hate these bots because I never know. Uh, it always takes me forever to find the ban button, but we got it there. I hate you. Who are you? I might hate you, but I don't. What team are you on? Tell me what team you're on. I'll tell you if I hate you or not, because uh, there, there might be a chance that I do. Caution? I might hate caution. I don't know. I haven't put thought into it. I might. I'll think about it. Right now, I'm at a might. I don't think you guys have done anything to make me hate you, though. Could be. <laughs> All right, caution. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. You guys are Div 5, correct? Oh, okay. Caution 5 0 Insomniac Central. Okay, I'm not going to mention that. If you notice, every match I mention is either like 5 4 or 5 3. Like, why am I. Oh, breaking news. Caution Dominic. Now, okay, obviously, beating Insomniac Central 5 0, that's actually a really good win. Because um, Insomniac Central, I thought, was going to curb stop Division 5. So, yes, I'll give you credit. That's a nice win. It's not newsworthy, though. Jeez. Congrats on that win, though. I don't hate you. Unless I do. LSL number 42. I finally get a chance to talk about Little Squid League. You guys tried to be jackasses over the weekend and give me a topic to talk about over Little Squid League. Was it going to happen? Was it going to happen? Was going to fall for it? It has been so long. Since I discussed a Little Squid League tournament, I had to ask my wife before I went live where my hat was because I couldn't find my hat. Usually I got it on top of the, the pop gun moose back here, which is blocked by the microphone. I didn't know where my hat was. I brought it to Low Tide City. I found it somewhere. I was able to make it happen. Get it on just in time. Three big things have changed with Little Squid League since the last time I looked at it. The last time I looked at it, this was a ladder tournament that had no skill cap or no limit to how many teams could sign up, and it was on Battlefy. Oh, it was also an independent tournament. The first big change for Little Squid League. It is now part of MIT. 
after four years, four years of being an independent tournament, they finally decided to join a legit organization. And I think they picked the right one to go with. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of bad choices you can go with, and I think they, they landed on a good one. The longest independent tournament. Little Squid League was around so long. They were around before I did that one episode of the podcast that maybe nobody remembers because we're closing in on 250 of these things, where originally I talked about why do we have all these individual tournaments and like, doesn't it make sense for some of them to go to other organizations, put tournaments on one stream channel and make things happen? After I said that, Squid Junction joined up with Dapple Productions. They got Paddling Pool as well, and the IPL gobbled up SAC. Well, it's, it, LSL seemed to be the one t- tournament that just kind of stood out for the longest time. And finally, they decided to join with MIT. Um now, I, I think the logic behind why LSL would join up with MIT it has to do with getting consistent staff. Maybe it's a little bit easier for them to get them or to use like MIT's resources to make that happen. But this benefits MIT way more than what it would probably benefit Little Squid League. MIT used to be, used to be like the low-level paradise. And there are so many great players that are at the top of the scene right now or or near the top that will tell you about the days of when they played in launch point and ink odyssey and the launch point draft cup and all those things the, they would basically send out q for low level before send out q was even a, a concept maybe that was ever created and it was great. It was, it was well populated. And for a generation of players that played uh, during the pandemic, that was like what low level was all about. It was all run through launch point. But if you join after that, you probably don't even know what the hell I'm talking about because it doesn't exist anymore. So now Q kind of just has a, a monopoly on that thing because it, it took those concepts and made it so much better without any skill level barriers at all which was what made launch point so cool was you could graduate out of it. And then it was like, Oh wait, I can't do all the fun launch point stuff anymore. I can't do pickups or like sets or anything like that. And launch point was infinitely better than midpoint, which I hate to beat a dead horse, but I've <laughs> one of my early things was just talking about how much I hated midpoint and uh, it doesn't exist anymore, but launch point doesn't either as well. But ever since then, and MIT lost Megalodon Cup as well, or or discontinued it. It MIT was basically just Minnow Cup at this point. Like that's that's pretty much all it is. It pretty much became an individual tournament itself. So Minnow Cup and LSL getting under the same umbrella really benefits MIT a lot, and it kind of gets them back to their roots. I mean, they already had those LSL players already, anyways, giving them something else that they can use as a resource helps that organization out a lot, I would say. So that's the big change, LSL now being a part of an organization. The second biggest change, it's no longer a ladder. Not for the longest time, but for the recent tournaments that I was paying attention to, Little Squid League has switched over to a ladder format, which there's a lot of pros and cons to that. The ladder is a set amount of time no matter what you know the ladder stage is going to be done in two or three hours whatever the to set the bad news about ladder is it's just a flip of a quarter as who's going to actually move on to top cut do i play one more match if i do do i lose to this team do i need to play one more to make it back in should i just stop when i go five and oh like there's a lot of stupid tiebreakers that you can't really manipulate into any kind of way that benefits you uh, in a ladder format. And the best team doesn't always win a ladder tournament. However, it was good for low level. The point being in Little Squid League teams getting as much practice as they want. They get to move at their own pace. And uh, eventually you do land on 16-ish teams who does make a good top cut, whether they are the best 16 teams or not up for the ladder to decide but ladder's gone instead they decided we want to go back to our roots and no i'm not talking about when little squid league first started out when they were a double elimination tournament that was a div 5 tournament that's right little squid league started out as a div 5 tournament but it was still 
lower than Low Ink because Low Ink used to be a Div 4 tournament. Man, I'm blowing some of your minds, aren't I? Things have changed a lot over the course of the past four years. But no, the best, most popular format that Little Squilly used to run was their group into single limb top cut bracket. Well, the reason they haven't been doing that for so long is because Little Squilly has become so popular. I think they ran a 90-team group tournament on Battlefy, and it just took forever, and it just didn't work, and it was basically you could not lose a single game or else you were not going to win this tournament. So understandable why they switched their format, but I think the latter just was just too... I, I don't know what feedback they got, but I would assume it was just not good enough feedback or whatever to where they were saying, all right, to hell with this. Let's, let's, let's just go back to our group stage, but we're just going to have to cap it at 64 teams, which I, I understand why you would want to do that. When you have 64 teams, as SOS, when they do their group format, was at 64 for a long time as well. That's the perfect number for a group group in the top cut format. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to control as TOs, especially when we put a limit on something. Teams sign up quicker because they want to guarantee a spot, so it allows you to do your verification earlier. There's a lot of pros to having that. I, me personally, as somebody who can't play in Little Squid League anyways, or, or, or any of these low-level tournaments, the, the problem is I, I just don't believe in caps, like team caps on low-level tournaments. It kind of goes against the point of, like, this is entry level into competitive Splatoon, but you only get in so many at a time. Um, low ink, you know, we, we, we argued back and forth about a couple of years ago when we had to expand low ink, like, are we going to put a cap on this or not? And we ultimately decided no, because that, that goes against what the spirit of low ink is about. And then we get a 200 tournament low ink. We're like, okay, what the hell do we do with this? Um, but I, it seems like they've come up with a good solution to that, which is the third big change little squealies had since I last changed, looked at it. They are now on Sindal dot ink like everybody else. Literally everybody else, which is good. The positives of that, uh, I mean, there's gazillions of positives, but the one big positive is they can run their group format more than 64 teams. That's how SOS has been able to run 84 teams in one night. Now, it still takes them four hours and some change to get through 84 teams, but the Sindal group stage handles transitioning it makes group stage go by quicker you don't have to wait for every single group and then manually build every single bracket by hand like you have to do on battlefy it handles it for you with that so that's why that's been great um now they they still have the they say they still have the cap for now that's because well if you've seen any sos the website crashes <laughs> anytime they have that many teams so little squid leagues i think waiting for the servers to be beefier on the send outside before they get rid of their 64 team cap. But I, I think they finally found a way to where they can run the format they want to run while also not having the cap restriction on it, which is the best of both worlds, which is once again, why send out is just so awesome. And there's no way they could run their ladder format on send anyways. So this, it seems like after all of the gazillions of, of things that little squid league has morphed and changed into over the past four years, instead of just dropping or just giving up, they kept finding different ways to make it work. And I think they might've finally finded, finded the format that they will use for the rest of their existence. The group stage they want to use on a website that can actually handle it, or maybe at some point in the future can handle it. And now since they're on Sendow, I'm pretty sure Low Ink is the last significant tournament that is not on Sindal. We are on Battlefy, and we're going to stay on Battlefy for the reigning future. We've already been in conversations for Sindal for the past several months about how we can get Low Ink over there, and that is going to be the case at some point. We are going to run Low Ink on Sindal at some point. It's going to take a long time, though, because if SOS crashes Sindal, what do you think six rounds of Swiss with over 100 teams, 150 teams is going to look like on Sendow? It's not ready for that yet. We're just too much of a monster. So we might be the only tournament left on Battlefy for a long time, uh, which might be weird. 
as far as finding results, but as more and more things get on Sindow, it makes low-level tournaments easier. The hardest thing about running low-level tournaments is verification. It takes so long, and it, it, it's very time-consuming. We got a lot of wizards at IPL that have created resources to make it easier, but when everything's on Sindow, verification across the board becomes easier and it becomes more efficient. Um, so that's what I'm kind of excited about with that. Regardless, though, an actual tournament took place, and we're going to be talking about it. I don't have it pulled up because I had to close it to look at Caution to figure out what they were talking about, and they wanted to brag about beating Insomniac Central 5-0. Congratulations, by the way. That is a nice win. But now i got to pull up this bracket yet again. We are... Oh, and this this is infinitely better than what I was looking at on mobile. Sindow.ink is awesome. Can I zoom in, though? I think that's the only thing I'm missing, a zoom in button. Because you guys can't, probably can't hardly see anything unless you really pull out your phones and zoom in on it. Fair enough. We are going to be looking at the four different brackets. First off, we're going to look at group stage just to kind of point out something. Uh... The problem with this format, if you want to call it a problem, this is a single elimination tournament. SOS is a single elimination tournament as well. No, it's not group into top cut. It is a single elimination tournament. If you lose once, you are going down to a bracket where you cannot win the tournament. Fair enough. Look, you got all these teams and you got you want to get it all done in one day, find a champion through all of it. You got to move through quick. You lose, you're down. I don't think a single team went two and one and then tiebreaker tie broke their way into diamond bracket and the well no the answer is yes finale found their way in there with a tiebreaker over lethal slide and blue angel did as well got it in over the breakfast club I have no idea what the tiebreaker is because they both got a one next to their TB rank or whatever but still this is a single elimination tournament don't let anybody trick you that it's not. Bronze match. The team that wants the bronze metal match is Sonata. With a little musical note next to the name, they won over Husky Splatoon 3-2. to two. If you're wondering who Sonata is, they had a rough time in Division 7, but who cares? The point of playing in Ludi is to make your team tougher. Sonata did not disband after having a rough Division 7. Instead, they are continuing to grind, and they're getting some results. They won the bronze bracket in Little Squid League, so nicely done to them. You like to see actual teams winning things. We'll see more of Sonata in the future. They're going to be winning more medals in the future. Bet. Silver Bracket was won by the Goober Ducks. And in fact, they dominated most of this one. If you're wondering who the Goober Ducks are, your guess is as good as mine. The cool thing about Sindow.inc is that you can click on these things. You can see rosters. You can immediately pull up all the information of all these players. I did that, and there wasn't anything of note of anybody on Goober Ducks. Baja Slider is an actual team though they are a uh they made div 8 playoffs actually <clears throat> Be, uh, yes they are a div 8 world playoff team but the goober ducks have nothing about them i did look at gay finboy cats profile and their profile just says Meow. so take that for what you will am i gonna have to go back to this to hit the back button yeah there we go okay we're set up again Gold bracket. Now, you would think gold bracket means that you won the whole tournament if you won gold bracket. No. If you win gold bracket, that just means you're actually the silver bracket team because there's a bracket above gold somehow. This, we just did the Olympics. Why are the names like this? This should be gold, bronze, silver, not in that order specifically. And then the last one should be uh, 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 epsilon bracket, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, this was won by Donkey Kong Tropical Reef, which is a Div 7 playoff team going up against X Name, which is a team that was in the same group as Donkey Kong Tropical Reef in Division 7. 
Those two teams did not play each other, though, because the X name dropped out beforehand. Donkey Kong Reef said, fine, you don't want to play us now. We'll meet you in grand finals of Gold Bracket and Little Squid League a month later. And here they are. And Donkey Kong got the win over two to three. Now, this is an actual team, Donkey Kong Tropical Reef. I know they played in the Flutie tournament to get a, a seeding, got put into Div 7, and they did really good there. They are a playoff team uh, in Division 7. Their name is really confusing, though. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is a thing. What is Donkey Kong Tropical Reef supposed to be? Is this some sort of hack? Is this some sort of uh, ROM hack kind of thing? Or like, I, I don't know what this is. I tried Googling it. I couldn't find it. So I, I hate it when you guys go to with confusing things like this. If you like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, just name yourself that. Don't try to throw off my brain against something. And what is this logo? Dare I click on it? Oh, it gets even smaller when you click on it, so that doesn't help anything. Uh, can I get back to that tournament from here? Oh, yeah, I hit bracket. Okay, cool. Diamond bracket, and then we'll call it a day. The team that won third place of all of Little Squid League, all of Little Squid League, is a team that was seeded 56 out of 63 teams. These guys were predicted to get eliminated round one of bronze bracket, and they got third place overall. So who is the hybrid team? I have no idea. It has to be a pickup, right? Like, when your name is hybrid family, that is literally, you're just saying, we are a pickup. If this team continues to go one forward, so be it. And they have an actual logo, which means they probably are a real team, but you got a pickup team name, and they are clearly better than the 56 seed that I'm assuming the Sindow site gave them. The team that finished in second place is a team that I do have beef with. No, I don't have issues with caution. I do have issues with this team name, though. Magical Cure Love Shot. They just get way too cute with this team name. This team name is way too cute. I remember being so frustrated having to seed them in Ludi because I kept moving them around and I couldn't find them because they start off with an at right there. So I had to just search Google and go from there. So I got beef with this team. However, they did play really well in this tournament. I did watch through that set. They did lose to Mount Pleasant Junior School, which has next to no results to their name. But I'm assuming they play a lot of Sindau, uh, Sindau Q because they did. Uh, I mean, they were the seventh seeded team in this tournament, even though they don't have a lot of results. And they played great. I watched the grand final set. They didn't curb stomp. You see the 3 0 and you think they like, oh, they dominated. They didn't really dominate. In fact, Magical Cure had the lead with one minute remaining in games one and two. They just couldn't hold on, or Mount Pleasant Jr. just clutched up more when it mattered in the most. Um, Use Dapples. In fact, we had a Dapple versus Tetra matchup. Free slider of a different kind of variety. It's fun kind of things to be seeing right there, but. It's always fun seeing something different, which is why it's always a joy to actually watch Little Squid League. But winning Little Squid League usually means something good, but I don't know anything about Mount Pleasant Junior School other than what I saw them play. So I don't know what this is. Is this the next Zest Fest? Who knows? Who absolutely knows? But it was good to look at Little Squid League. I'm excited to see them continue to grow with the Sindow.inc website. I'm happy they got back to the format that they're they were known for and um yeah and they're part of mit now so like only positive things going for this tournament and the way little squid league has still existed over the course of the past four years is kind of why it's frustrating seeing all these new tournaments pop up because you know a lot of them are just going to disappear in a couple of months anyways little squid league had many opportunities to disappear Three years ago, they were getting bullied off of their date like every single month. And eventually they said, F it. We're just going to run on Saturdays and we're going to pick a date. And we're just going to run with it. Um, they they stuck it out. They changed their format many times. They changed how they do things a lot of different times. And that that should be worth something. I, I, I think that kind of uh, we're going to keep doing this until it, that determination. We're going to keep doing it till we get it right. I think other TOs should look at that as 
is how you should model your tournament, how you should get your tournament to be successful over time instead of just, well, let me just create another Saturday tournament that nobody wants to play in because there's 20 other tournaments going on at the same time. Push, push the tournaments that already exist to make them better. Good things can happen. And that's going to do it for today's episode of the podcast. This is the latest I ever did one, but when Falco DM'd me and offered the idea of doing this after a Div 6 semifinals I was, or finals, I was like, sure, I'll make it work. But this is the long day, and I'm done talking. If you'd like to be a part of the podcast anyway, feel free to follow me on Blue Sky, I guess. I'm just at Popgun. Uh, a lot of people... I've been following me as of late on Blue Sky. Let's go to Henlo. I'm assuming they're a nice player. They're a strong player, so they've got to be nice. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Good luck if you are playing in the qualifier. Sign up for Proving Grounds on Sunday. Splat zones only. I know you guys love that. You have no reason not to. <laughs>